Proterabo is the prime arc of the Iron Warriors, one of the original 20 Space Marine Legions. Bitter and feeling marginalized by the Imperium, he sided with Horus during the Horus Heresy and has since ascended to demonhood. He, like his Iron Warriors, had a natural affinity towards technology and a cold logic, but lacked the strength of faith. Perturabo. Youth. According to Perturabo himself, he is estimated to have been born around 792.m30. When the Primarchs were scattered to the ends of the galaxy, Proterabo landed on a planet named Olympia. For at least a year, he was alone in the rural regions of Olympia and became a famed wanderer that would slay legendary beasts. However, he was first discovered climbing the mountains below the city-state of Lochos with no memory of anything prior. The guards, having realized this was no normal child, brought him before the Damakos, the tyrant of Lochos. Damakos was intrigued by the child and brought him into his house and treated him as family. Damakos noticed the boy's overwhelming intellect and skill with everything from architecture to the arts to political debate to combat, and he became a wonder with which Locho secured alliances with other city-states. The young Proterabo, though he knew he was not of this world and was made by design as opposed to nature, was disgusted by the religious Olympians and believed in the cold logic of science and reason. Supposedly, Proterabo never trusted the Olympians and refused to return any affection given by Damakos. Damakos spent plenty of time with his new son, but never got anything in return. Proterabo shunned his siblings Herakan and Andos and only enjoyed the company of his foster sister Caliphone. Many saw Proterabo as a cold and brooding child, but when considered that he had been thrown onto a world with no idea of his origins or purpose, this is perhaps a little harsh. Nonetheless Proterabo took the name not of venerated Olympian heroes as was expected of nobility, but rather an ancient title for those with prodigious ability. Proterabo waged wars against rivals for his adopted father, and due to the many warring city-states of Olympia gathered enormous experience in siege warfare. Overseeing the construction of many siege engines once thought technologically impossible on the planet, Proterabo soon scored victory after victory and became known as a merciless bloody-handed warlord. Throughout his life Proterabo was haunted by visions and feelings of a great maelstrom, though he told none of it as he feared it would be seen as a sign of weakness. When the Emperor arrived Proterabo immediately submitted himself to the Emperor's mercy and ousted the tyrant of Locus. Damakos is said to have spent his remaining few years gathering forces to attempt to retake his power. He failed but created a current of unrest which would be used later. Proterabo spent much time with his brother Magnus on Terra in his early days in the fledgling Imperium attempting to discover the many secrets of mankind's past and becoming particularly interested in the works of famous inventors. It became said that of all the emperor's sons, Proterabo had the most raw scientific and technological knowledge. Upon taking command of his legion, Proterabo reviewed the war record of his new forces. After heavily analyzing their record, effectiveness, doctrines, and practices, Proterabo found them wanting. His punishment was decimation. By lottery, one in every ten legionaries was chosen to be beaten to death by his comrades. Such would be the reign of Proterabo, brutal and unforgiving. Proterabo went on to lead his new iron warriors on a lightning crusade against the planet of Justice Rock and its heretical black judges. Great Crusade! Proterabo established himself as efficient and highly capable, but also brutal, bitter, and envious. It is widely acclaimed that Proterabo was envious of Rogal Dorn. He was annoyed by his constant reminders of the perfection of the defenses on Terra. The other Primarchs also kept Proterabo at a distance. This might have been because of his supreme command of technology, far in advance of anything the other Primarchs could do. He is referred to as the comrade who devised the best plan to avoid the defenses of Overdog Mashog, an orc warboss under attack by Lemin Russ, leader of the Space Wolves, and Jagatai Khan, Khan of the White Scars. The Iron Warriors went on to create citadels throughout the regions they fought in. 
Small numbers of iron warriors were left behind at these outposts, but Proterabo resented being forced to split his army. As time went on they were stereotyped as being the best army for sieges and garrisons, but eventually the iron warriors were so worn out that they simply began to enjoy the killing they had to do after the trenches were dug. A particularly vicious campaign was against the Rudd in the Sactrada Deeps, a region that Proterabo saw as strategically useless. Nonetheless, he dutifully oversaw the purging of the Rudd despite his legion's heavy casualties, as it was ordered by the War Council. At the climax of the campaign, as his fleet lay devastated by a Rudd temporal shockwave, Proterabo could only blame the Emperor's vanity for the damage done to his sons on this useless campaign. It might well have been Horus who kept the legion in this role, allowing him to more easily sway the mind of Proterabo towards chaos. Horus Heresy Shortly after the Sactrada Deep's campaign Proterabo learned that his homeworld, Olympia, was in rebellion. Damikos was dead and in his absence the politicking and bickering of the city-states had resumed. Proterabo demanded the Olympians themselves enact decimation, killing one in every ten of their own or face extermination and enslavement. Many refused, and Proterabo purged Olympia city by city, overrunning the fortresses he had built and sparing no one. Iron warriors who refused to participate in the genocide suffered the same fate. By the time the massacre was over, five million Olympians had been killed and the rest put into slavery. While storming Locho's palace, Proterabo came across his old foster sister Caliphone and strangled her to death after a furious argument, which she blamed the Primarch for what had befallen their world. As Olympia died, Proterabo looked on in cold silence. After the pyres were burning, the Iron Warriors realized what they had done. They were no more the saviors of the Imperium, they had been destroying the Rudd one moment and the next, they were committing genocide on their own. Proterabo realized the Emperor could never forgive him for what he had done. Horus, on the other hand, commended Proterabo for his decisive action and the Lord of Iron swore an oath of loyalty to the War Master. Horus later made the most of the opportunity by presenting Proterabo with a hammer named Forgebreaker the gift symbolic of a signing of a pact between them. It was at that time that disturbing news of the Horus heresy and new orders came from Terra. Lemin Rus and the Space Wolves had attacked Magnus and his thousand sons on Prospero. Horus had turned renegade with his legion the sons of Horus beside some other legions. The whole of the Imperium was on the brink of a civil war. The new orders were to join with six other legions and then to face Horus and his forces on Istvan V. The result of the following battle was that the Iron Warriors, Knight Lords, Word Bearers and Alpha Legion all joined Horus and almost completely destroyed the three remaining loyal legions on the drop site massacre. After that the Iron Warriors were let loose and Proterabo relished the opportunity to fight in a way that did not rely on massive, sieges and trench warfare. Because of their massive deployment throughout the galaxy, dozens of warsmiths took over planets and demanded tithes to support the heresy. After the first siege of Hydrocordatus Proterabo was approached by Fulgrim, Primarch of the Emperor's children, who promised the Lord of Iron near unlimited power. The two embarked on a quest to tip the balance of the rebellion in Horus' favor by journeying into the Eye of Terror, and retrieving a weapon known as the Angel Exterminatus. After a brief boarding action with the Sisyphean, which Proterabo allowed to escape due to his disgust of Fulgrim's legion, the duo arrived in the eye and quickly landed on the Chrome world of Idris. Entering an ancient Eldar citadel known as the Amorn en Wyshak Kalis, the Emperor's children and Iron Warriors had to contend with an army of Wraithguard and Wraithlords that had awoken from their slumber. At the height of the vicious battle Fulgrim attempted to betray his brother and slip away, but was pursued by Proterabo. Both soon arrived in a massive spherical chamber, and Fulgrim revealed to his brother that there was no angel exterminatus, but he rather was destined to become such a weapon on this world. Furious, Proterabo attempted to attack Fulgrim, but was drained of his power when Fulgrim activated the Morgatar stone that Proterabo had previously received under the guise of a gift. 
Now with the Iron Warrior's Primarch's power in hand, Fulgrim revealed the purpose of his plan, to achieve apotheosis, better known as demonhood. However just as Fulgrim was about to complete his ritual and achieve demonhood, Protorabo gathered enough strength to charge at his brother, but was interrupted by an ambush of Salamander's Iron Hands and Raven Guard who had been stalking the traitor fleet in search of vengeance since the drop site massacre. One of the loyalist Astartes during the battle shattered the Morgatar stone, freeing some of the energy Proturabo and giving him the ability to strike down Fulgrim with his thunder hammer. However, Proturabo only managed to destroy the Primarch's mortal skin and was reborn as a demon prince. Now a massive but elegant serpentine creature, Fulgrim told his brother that they would meet again then vanished in a burst of warp energy along with his emperor's children. Exhausted and betrayed by his brother he knew had now lost any trace of honor, Protorabo allowed the loyalist Astartes to withdraw and led his own forces off the Crone world. Looking to settle the score with Fulgrim and better understand the cosmic power he had witnessed, Protorabo ordered his fleet to sail deep into the Eye of Terror. Protorabo and the Iron Warriors next found themselves trapped by the singularity in the heart of the Eye of Terror. Protorabo gambles in his attempt to escape, diving straight into the black hole at its heart. Perhaps by sheer blind luck, they were transported far across the warp to the Talan system. Once arriving at Talan, Protorabo was made aware of the black oculus hidden beneath the planet, and he immediately drew up plans to invade. Eventually, the Iron Warrior's search for the Black Oculus was exposed, and they are forced to withdraw from the planet. Following Talan, the Iron Warriors were ordered by Horus to man a defensive line of worlds in order to hold off the Ultramarines, which with the death of the Ruined Storm were advancing towards the traitor's rear. Protorabo dutifully oversaw these vicious, bitter sieges. Overstretched and underequipped, the Iron Warriors once again bled for worlds far from the center of the war without thanks. Protorabo by this point had grown weary and darker, both from the effects of Fulgrim's treachery and the corrupting effects of the Black Oculus. The war Protorabo was fighting on Kraid was interrupted by Argonus, who brought orders from Horus to find Angron and bring both of their legions for the muster at Ulanor in preparation for the drive on Terra. Despite having to abandon much of his forces as well as worlds he had fought so bitterly for, Protorabo obeyed the Warmaster and journeyed to Serum with a small fleet in search of information on Angron's whereabouts. On Serum, the demon Saram revealed that Angron was on Deluge before possessing the body of Vok, creating the first obliterator. Protorabo then traveled to Deluge, where he confronted the vicious and corrupted demon Primarch Angron. Protorabo and Angron engaged in a brutal battle, with the demon having a clear edge in power and speed. However, despite taking many wounds Protorabo endured and goaded Angron, declaring that he was born a slave and now was a slave to darkness for all eternity. By using the Iron Warriors, Iron Circle, and Vogue to outmaneuver and bombard the World Eaters, Angron was bested as an Ultramarine's fleet appeared in orbit over Deluge. Angron laughed and declared that they were all now going to die, but Protorabo reminded the demon Primarch that he had seen his warriors butchered while he had done nothing once before. This moved Angron enough to act, and after creating a warp storm the Iron Warriors and World Eaters fleets were able to escape the Ultramarines and move to Ulanor, where they accompanied Horus for the muster. Protorabo proved to be a pivotal and primary traitor commander during the Solar War. During the campaign to capture the Sol system, he oversaw the capture of both the Uranus and Jupiter defensive spheres from the Imperial Fists. During the early stages of the Siege of Terra, Protorabo was not allowed to lead the siege of the Imperial Palace but instead fortify the Sol system against Gilliman's expected arrival, something that embittered him greatly. Nonetheless, the Lord of Iron was able to review bombardment data and surmise a weakness in the palace's void shield network. Horus later met with Protorabo personally aboard the Vengeful Spirit, where while still compelled to obey Horus he now saw the Warmaster as little more than a slave to the ruinous powers. Protorabo studied all warp lore he saw aboard the damned flagship, 
pledging to master the Empyrean and achieve power similar to that of a god. Horus attempted to appeal to the Primarch's pride, emphasizing how much he appreciated the Lord of Iron's contributions and how he was the only Primarch he could still trust. Protorabo was however still denied the coveted duty of besieging the palace, instead being ordered to clear landing zones for the traitor titans. After weeks of fighting, the traitor war effort stalled in the face of the walls of the palace and the demon Primarchs proved aloof and unreliable. Horus thus relied on Protorabo to conduct the main offensive push into the Lion's Gate spaceport. Hoping to overcome Dawn's traps with bluntness, Protorabo put Kroger in charge of the ground offensive while inserting Forex and a unit of Iron Warriors behind enemy lines to seize key bridges into the spaceport. However the attack stalled in the face of the Emperor's psychic shield of the palace, forcing Protorabo to rely on the Immaterium by having Zadu Layak and Typhus summon Korbak's Utterblight to subvert the Imperial Palace's population. During the main assault on the Lion's Gate spaceport, Protorabo revealed that Forix and his men had been sacrificed as a ruse in order to draw away Imperial Fist's defenses in order to allow the Iron Blood to dock with the spaceport's main spire. As Protorabo set down, Rogel Dawn met him on the field of battle. However Protorabo refused to be goaded into a battle by Dawn's taunts, knowing the Imperial Fist's Primarch simply intended to buy time for his troops to withdraw. Protorabo instead promised that only after he had torn down the palace would he kill Dawn. Following the fall of Lion's Gate, Protorabo landed on Terra's surface and set up a command center to direct the siege. With Horus increasingly losing touch with the Materium, it fell to Protorabo to command the war effort and he became the face of the enemy to the defenders of Terra. With the blessing of the War Master, Protorabo controlled his allies through a command staff that consisted of Arbidon and the Mournival, Araman, Typhus, Eidolon, and Krostovok. Protorabo directly connected himself to the traitor data network, absorbing enormous quantities of data and directing every facet of the siege with his own mind. In this state, commanding the greatest siege in history, Arbidon suspected that Protorabo was finally happy. In an uncharacteristically good mood, Protorabo praised Arbidon when he noticed the same flaw in the Saturnine Gate that he recently had also discovered. However Protorabo was worried that Dawn also knew of the flaw, and exploiting it would be a trap by his brother. As a result, he allowed Arbidon and the Emperor's children to attack Saturnine, and suffer the losses and humiliation that would come with it should the assault fail. Sure enough, Dawn had known of the floor and ambushed the traitors as they attacked. After the setback at Saturnine, Protorabo began to despair over the state of his allies. All save he and the Iron Warriors had by now fully fallen to chaos, and with his warriors marched all kinds of warp abominations. Protorabo realized that the war was no longer one of Legion versus Legion and the ultimate test against his brother Rogel was now tainted. The final straw for Protorabo came after Horus informed Protorabo that he was to disperse his Iron Warriors amongst the various war zones, and that his position was to be taken over by Murtarion and the Death Guard. Finally having had enough, Protorabo ordered the Iron Warriors to evacuate Terra and withdrew to the Iron Blood. Post-Heresy After fleeing Terra following Horus' death, Protorabo took the opportunity to take vengeance on the Imperial Fists with a trap on Sebastus IV. The trap was known as the Eternal Fortress, a keep centered within 20 square miles of bunkers, towers, minefields, trenches, tank traps and redoubts. Upon hearing of this, Rogel Dorn publicly declared that he would dig Protorabo out of his hole and bring him back to Terra in an iron cage. Rogel Dorn expected an honorable battle, but this was not to be. Beginning by isolating the four companies of the Imperial Fists from their orbital support, Protorabo began to carefully divide his enemy and destroy them piecemeal. Some Imperial Fists managed to penetrate the defenses and reach the center of the Eternal Fortress, only to find there was no central keep is simply an open space watched by yet more defenses. The fortress was a decoy of no real value, surrounded by 20 miles of killing ground. 
By the sixth day of the siege, Imperial Fist Space Marines were fighting individually, without support, using the bodies of their own battle brothers for cover. The siege of the Eternal Fortress, later referred to as the Iron Cage Incident, lasted for a further three weeks. Relief came in the form of Rubert Gilemin and the Ultramarines, who drove off the Iron Warriors, but the siege left Rogel Dorn a broken man and rendered the Imperial Fist's chapter unable to fight for 19 years. The gene seed of over 400 Imperial Fists was sacrificed to the Dark Gods, and Proterabo was elevated to the rank of Demon Prince of Chaos Undivided. Following this victory, the Iron Warriors fled to the Eye of Terror and secured a new demon world named Medrangard, crafting a terrible fortress world where his soldiers ruled in vast towers. The Primarch's personal stronghold, Fortress of Hate, is said to be the most redoubtable of fortress worlds. Today, the Iron Warriors give their greatest loyalty to Pecherabo for saving them from sacrifice in the name of the Emperor. In 400 M32, Pachurabo emerged once more to wreak havoc. Invoking Nurgle, Pachurabo imbued an extremely contagious curse and released it into the mechanical systems on the Forge World of Toil. The Chaos Plague spread through the machines and factory complexes changed over the course of eight days. On the eighth day, giant cables burst from the ground, spewing forth hungry demon engines while the factories themselves grew legs and prowled the planet's surface. All life on toil was eventually annihilated. In early M39, Pachurabo aided Abaddon the Despoiler in the Tenth Black Crusade by opening a warp portal for the Black Legion. Pachurabo spent much of the subsequent millennia studying the defenses of Segmentum Obscurus, and establishing a network of techno-cultist informants. After the 13th Black Crusade and formation of the Great Rift, Pachurabo unleashed a thousand armies and coordinated them in a grand strategy against the most heavily defended worlds in Obscurus. After the formation of the Great Rift, he appeared to fight his brother Mortarion in the War of Rust and Ruin. Pachurabo has collaborated with Vashtor the Archiphane on many nightmarish technological projects. As such, he provided a complement of Iron Warriors to Vashtor to assault the Rock during the Ark of Omens campaign. Thank you for listening to this entry from Warhammer 40,000 Lexicanum.